Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. This is month number two on operations and relations. Stay tuned for a brand new video every single day for all of October. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at what is a power set. Now, the next set operation that we will look at is known as a power set or the power set. This is an operation similar to union or intersection. It is generally only used as an absolute operator, operating on a single set, not between two different sets. The power class of A is generally represented as PA, with that P kind of in a script like that. A power class is defined as the class of all subclasses of a class. Remember that the null set is a subclass of any class, and that all classes are subclasses of themselves. So the power class of A, where A is equal to B, C, or the class of B and C, and of course the B and C are distinct, would be the set of, or the class of, the null set, the class of B, the class of C, and the class of B and C, because those are all of the possible subclasses of B, C. One way to think of a power set or power class is to think that it is all possible combinations of the members of the class or set, including the kind of bookend cases of none of the members and all of the members. Here are some more examples where, once again, assuming all classes are distinct. If D is equal to the class of E, then the power class of D is equal to the null set and the class of E. So, when there's only one member, the only combinations we can do are everything or nothing. If F is equal to the class of the null set, then the power class of F is equal to the class of the null set and the class of the null set. Very similar to the last example. If G is equal to the class of the class of J and the class of H and I, then the power class of G is equal to the null set, once again, just the class of J, the class of H and I, and the class of the class of J and the class of H and I. Here's the formal definition of a power class that we will use. For all A and all B, the power class of A is equal to B means by definition, for all C, C is a subclass of A is materially equivalent to C is a member of B. So all of the members, all of the subclasses of A are members of the power class, and all of the members of the power class are subclasses of A. In other words, for all classes A and B, the power class of A is identical to B means by definition that for all classes C, C being a subclass of A is materially equivalent to C being a member of B. In other words, the members of B are all and only subclasses of A. We're gonna call this power set definition in proofs. Up next, we're going to take a look at the power axiom, but before that, here are some exercises to try on your own. Take a look at what is the power class of the null set, the power class of the power class of the null set, and the power class of the power class of the power class of the null set. And here are three more. If A, B, and C are unique, what is the power set of A, B, C. If A, B, C, and D are unique, how many members are in the power set of A, B, C, D? And for any set with N unique members, how many members will the power set of that set have? Give those a try. The answers are going to be in the next video. Subscribe, hit the notification bell if you like this content and want to stay apprised for more when it comes out. We have a new video every single day for all of October and four more months of set theory after this yet to come. Watch this video and more here at carneades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.